Sometimes it makes me sad, though. Andy being gone. I have to remind myself that birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. And when they fly away, the part of you that knows it was a sin to lock them up does rejoice. But still, the place you live in is that much more drab and empty now that they're gone. I guess I just missed my friend. Morgan Freeman, Shawshank Redemption. <clears throat> I often like to use dramatic monologues to comment on the nature of events like this. <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, President Curitan, distinguished faculty, parents, and friends, graduates of the class of May 2013, thank you all for being a part of this celebration. Furthermore, thank you for bravely selecting me to speak to you all today. It's not an easy task to endow a student with student loans, tell him this is the last day he needs to show his face around here, and then give him a microphone to speak to the masses. <clears throat> I digress. As a child, I always wanted to be a football player in the NFL. If anyone grew up in Green Bay or really anywhere in Wisconsin, you were witness to the cultural worship of the Green Bay Packers. It was truly amazing to be a part of that. And if you grew up in Minnesota, well, you got to look at the Metrodome. <clears throat> no, 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 but seriously, if a city could have a zit, that would be it. <clears throat> now this year, I remember sitting in my room as this past Super Bowl came to an end. Now, after the Ravens won and the confetti fell, Ray Lewis got up on the podium in front of millions of viewers. A psalm blazed across his chest, Holding up the Lombardi Trophy, he echoed praises to God, citing Romans 8.31, If our God is for us, who could be against us? Claiming victory in the name of the Lord over the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> now, though it may not have been the most theologically correct message, I thought to myself at that moment, there is absolutely no way I could spread the good news on such a massive platform. To have the courage and the faith that Ray Lewis had to promote God with his stage and fame, wow, I always wish I could do something like that, to have that opportunity to be on the biggest materialistic platform in the world and promote something as wholesome and as true as God. Then it hit me. We believe in a God that centralizes the universe, a God that created the base of life and throughout the Bible showcases his wrath and his grace and his love beyond human comprehension. God's power is unimaginable, yet his son, who most accurately reflects his character, was a humble carpenter who led a group of ragamuffins across the Middle East to tell the truth of the gospel. The message was more well known than he was during his time. And furthermore, we find that God the Father, the creator of the universe, spoke most vividly and powerfully in undistracted silence. I think of Elijah in 1 Kings and says, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then the voice of the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? See, when directing Elijah's focus, when challenging him, God spoke to him in the form of a modest whisper among chaotic noise, noise that would appear more powerful than the Lord. We hear so much about how quiet time will connect us to God much easier when distractions are removed. That always seemed to be counterintuitive to me as God would and should overcome any noise, any distraction that makes his presence unknown. However, as those verses illustrate, God's character may not be that of a powerful entity barreling over challenges in pursuit of his most loyal followers, but that of an undistracted presenter who has a lot to say in very few words. Indeed, God illustrates his greatest instruction in the quietest, most humble venues. We live in a society of noise today. 
I think of gender definitions. Men are bombarded by a loud media that tells them they should be a six-pack dawning, sexual barbarian, uncaring of female counterparts' feelings or beliefs. But we live in a political setting that calls for the demotion of men in exchange of promoting manly qualities in women. Women in society are told an abundance of lies as well. Be a sexual deviant, attractive to men, but not too much, or suffer the wrath of shame. Also, don't be overweight, but also pursue your dreams and stick it to men who have oppressed you since the dawn of time. Beyond that, everyone on earth has been given a platform in which to voice their passions, their opinions. During the Boston bombing tragedy recently, over 15,000 blog posts were sent out and, mil and 4 million tweets in the first hour of it occurring. An hour after such a great tragedy, we were already saturated with noise as everyone tried to be profound about their perspective. There are so many more examples of how loud we are today. I think it speaks for all of our desire to be truly known. Our opinions need to be different in such a loud environment with the hope that our voice resonates better with everyone than everyone else who is talking. And again, we are outsmarted by a God who knows infinitely more than all of us. As we get louder and louder, the truth of his word and his power remains in the form of a modest whisper so long as we listen. The way God differentiates himself among the nations today is by humbly presenting himself as a quiet force above the noise. It's countercultural. So with that example in mind, Northwestern, I come back to us sitting here, ready to graduate, pay off debt, get a job, go to grad school, move across the sea. Beyond this campus, there's a society that will scream at you, suggest what you should feel, condense or simplify your heart. The noise will appear to be unbearable. Should you attempt to grab every bit of information or advice or opinion that is spewed at you from vague sources surrounding you, you will be lost. But should you understand that a life lived emulating the whisper of God's call for each of us is a life that fills completely. Your direction will be guided by him, even when he asks you, what are you doing here, like he did with Elijah? A powerful whisper of a life lies in the heart of a humble family, a conversation with the Muslim neighbor struggling to feed her children, the lifelong commitment of marriage under God, the embrace of a gay brother or sister simply conveying the love of Christ and our equal need for him, a fishing trip with your best friend, and other things you don't find covered by the news or tweeted about. Bombings are loud. Deaths and divorces and diseases are loud. Super Bowls are loud. Northwestern, as each of us go out into this world wanting to make a meaningful impact, know the God who sends you is not loud. My last words to you are this. Shh. Whisper. Listen.